ready to water change. So today I'm going to be working on these 420 longs that you see in front of you. Um, and I've got to get my tool belt all packed up here. So anytime I'm working on multiple tanks at once, I usually shove all the stuff that I need in my tool belt. And then I get to work. So I'm going to need a trash can. I'm going to need this python. What else am I going to need? What else? Hmm. Come on, Haley. What else do you need? You're forgetting stuff. So I got to move this light so I can open the lids. Because I got to trim some plants and scrape some glass. And clean some tanks. Woohoo. I need this chair because I'm super short. And I need a towel. Yes, a towel. Always bring a towel. Don't forget to bring a towel. Always have a towel. So, first things first. On this tank, I gotta trim the jungle valve. So, if you're ever gonna put jungle valve in a 20 gallon long, just know you're gonna have to trim it quite a bit. Um, <clears throat> you should trim your valve anyway, just because it makes it grow a bushier, better looking plant. Uh, but jungle valve will hit the top of a 20 long in no time and grow straight over it. So, if you're gonna run it in a 20 long, trim it. Keep it trimmed, trim it every week, trim it just like you cut your hair. So, get the trimming done. Dry the hands for no reason, because OCD. I'm gonna start this python and get it draining. We're gonna do about a 50% water change on all of these tanks. Um, and while that python has started, I'm gonna get out my scraper and I'm gonna scrape the glass. And so that I don't bore you while I'm scraping the glass, let's take a look at what's in this tank. So this is a uh, 20 long and it currently houses my splash tetras and some auto sinkless and a few trilineatus cories and a few amano shrimp this is one of my only community tanks i have three three community tanks that aren't really community tanks they're just housing projects until i'm ready to build them their own tank but whatever um plants as far as plants go it has um a little bit of italian val some jungle val huteroy crypt red metallic crypt and a couple of nuri crypts in there and once we get done scraping it, I will move on to the next tank and get it ready because I work faster than the python does. Um, I really wish the python was faster, but that's okay. I'll work around it and move on to the next tank. So this tank here is uh, another 20 long, and this houses my breeding pair of longfin bristlenose plecos. Um, there's probably a few of their babies left in there as well. There's always a few scraggler plecos in there somewhere that have hidden from me. Um, the first tank you saw, the Splash Tetra tank, that has a hang on the back filter and an airline running to it, but the airline barely puts anything out, if anything, and the hang on the back is barely trickling. So basically no filtration. And then this pleco tank has no filter and no air. So there is a sponge filter in it, but the sponge filter is not running. So first things first with this tank, I gotta pull all the algae. There's a big mass of algae forming in that Taiwan lily that's in there. Um, there was Anubis in there that I needed to trim back. It had some leaves on it that weren't doing so hot. So trimmed those leaves, trimmed up the rhizome, pulled the algae out of the Taiwan lilies, and we're gonna scrape the glass on this one too. And on that other tank, it's still draining, and then I'll go switch it to fill here in a second. So, get that. Wait for the water line to get all the way to the top. Throw the ball for the dog while it's annoying me while I'm trying to water change. So, we'll throw the ball for the dog. We will go and switch the python, because that is now full. Switch it back to drain, and we will move that python over to the pleco tank. Now, generally I would tell you, you need to sterilize your python somehow in between tanks. It is not a good idea to go from tank to tank to tank with your python. However, today I am cleaning these four tanks. None of them have duckweed. They all have fish in them that have been in my care for long enough that quarantine is over and I don't have any issues. So let's take a look at this Pleco tank. It's got some Anubis over here that's growing on the sponge filter that's not working. Big old mass of Taiwan Lily that is now algae free. 
and my long fin bristlenose plecos. So there's the pair and then a few, you can see one albino baby that has been a straggler. He hid from me while I was catching everyone. So that's who's in there. Um, this is one of the only tanks that I really do any kind of quote unquote gravel vacking. I just kind of pick up the mold that's sitting on the top because plecos are a bit, you know, dirty. But that's okay. <clears throat> Get those cleaned up. Then we're going to move up to the splash tetra, or not splash tetra, what's up there? Oh, yeah, rainbow shiners. So up here on top in this 20 long is where my rainbow shiner group is. So this is a newer fish that I'm working with. Um, I still haven't gone all the way through the research and decided how to set up their tank for breeding, but they're growing out and putting some weight on and getting happy. So that'll be a project for later. So we scrape all this, <clears throat> scrape the glass, get down off the chair, try not to die, and switch the pleco tank from drain to fill because it's had about enough water taken out of it. I usually do about 50%. Then we're going to fertilize that tank with the 614 Ferts. Um, I really like this fertilizer mix. You can get it at 614fish.com. Uh, my buddy Steven makes it, and it's actually really, really good fertilizer. So I think he's coming out with root tabs now as well. You might check that out. I think he's got a special sale on them since he just started them. <clears throat> so get that done, and then we'll move up to this next tank over here. And I got to get up on this and try not to oh, die. Try not to die. Okay. All right. Up here, we're going to pull algae. This tank perpetually has algae. I think I just don't have enough plants in it. The vallison area tried to die off on me at one point, so I'm trying to get it to bounce back, and the algae just spreads over the bottom. <clears throat> but I did produce these wonderful little baby bettas up there that are growing out down here in this 10-gallon, so they're pretty cute, right? So maybe algae's worth it? I'm not sure. But neither one of those two tanks on the top have uh, filters. Get out of the way, cat. Ugh. Neither one of those two tanks up at the top have filters either. This bed of tank does not have a filter. So once we get all that done, we take a break. So I'm going to go take that break, and you guys go live your best life while I check out this crab tank. See you later, guys. <laughs> 